All right, boys and girls, what I'm going to show you today is the best way to tin enameled magnet wire. Let's get started. First of all, for those of you that can't bother to learn anything that need the answer right away, here it is. 400 degrees Celsius is the magic temperature. I use 6040 solder and I put a little bit of rosin flux on my lead. Insert it in, uh, let's say a couple millimeters. One, two, pull it out, it is perfect. If you've tried this before and you've already got some cruft on there, if the enamel's already partially melted, it didn't work, you just need to cut it and get it clean. Ah, it doesn't work. It does work. And for all the things that you see here and the things that you don't see here, I'll put links in the description below. And if you like this, then please do like it. Now for those of you that actually enjoy the learning process, what I'm gonna do is, first of all, I've got my tip already cleaned. It doesn't look super clean because at 400 degrees Celsius, all of the solder just burns into nothing very, very quickly. So I'm going to stick it in the little mabob. You know this little mabob. Yeah. All right. Oh, look at that. It looks clean. Oh my gosh. And it smells so bad. That's the one thing you got to be careful about 400 degrees Celsius. It, if you don't have a fume extractor, oh, it's just terrible. And I have one, but it would ruin the quality of the audio, so I'm not using it right now. So my lungs are going black because I love you. Now, I'm just going to get a nice big blob of solder on here. Do -do 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 -do. Oops, not too big of a blob apparently. Let's try that. Okay, yeah. And this one didn't go too bad. You can't see how bad the smoke is. The smoke is pretty bad. And you can kind of start to see that the rosin basically just burned up and and the uh, solder is oxidizing instantaneously. It's it's a problem. The next thing I'm gonna do is I've got I've got this little bit of flux wax here. And what I like to do, you can kind of see I've I've mutilated it. I just like to dip the tip of whatever I'm tinning in there. You can never have too much flux unless you do, but you probably don't. The flux is on there and it just helps keep things clean, I guess. I'm gonna insert this in as far as I want the enamel stripped for just about two seconds. So insert it in, uh, let's say a couple millimeters. One, two, pull it out. Look at that, it is perfect. I'm gonna put it in a little further so you can see just how perfect it is. Now the enamel is actually burning off. There we go. So you can see just how perfect that tin is. It is beautiful. I'm going to clean off my iron again. Get ready for the action. Here it comes. And I'm going to turn my iron down to 300 degrees because I don't want to burn up my tip. So there's a little bit of cruft on there depending on how you do it. If I did it in just one pass, I might not have got that. And this might even come off or it might not. We'll see. No, no, that's just, that's just melted enamel. It's, it's there to stay. If you want to know some of the other methods, I've got a video that I'll link to in the description below that is the three ways to tin. And I talk about using the X-Acto knife and sandpaper and all that. Just as a bonus, now I'm gonna show you the worst way to do this. I've got a heat gun. Let's go ahead and set that to 450. I'm just gonna pull it out of its holster a little bit in this unsafe position so it'll turn on and heat up. Let that get up there. Just so you know, that's a complete lie. It doesn't really heat up that fast. But you have to use one of those thermocouple thermometers to really know what temperature it is. I'm just gonna let it sit for a minute and come back. Okay, so now this thing is hot enough to catch paper on fire. Just watch that. I don't actually wanna catch it on fire, so I'm not gonna do that, but you know that it's hot. What better way to have no precise control and have no idea how well this would work than to use a heat gun. Here we go. Make sure it's in the opposite direction of my fingers and I'm pointing it slightly up, not down, and nothing's behind it so I'm not melting like my iPhone or microphone cable or other things that I don't want burninated. Okay, so I've been holding this thing for like two minutes. It didn't work. Proved the worst way, or I guess that the worst way would be to not try to strip it at all or just like pray to the magnet stripping gods and wait for them to do it. But I think we found pretty much the worst way as well. One more note before we go. I have tried at other temperatures, 350, 375, etc. I found that at about 350 is where it starts to strip. 
300 doesn't do the job. 375 will do it all right. But 400 to me seems to be where I can get it up to the temperature. I can do the business, as we like to say in the YouTube electronics world, and then pull it away and be done. So there you are, the best way to tin your magnet wire. This isn't actually tinned anymore. I must have clipped that off camera. <coughs> ah, there we are. The best way to tin your magnet wire. Well, you've reached the end of the video, which tells me one of two things. Either you love the sound of my voice and it helps you fall asleep at night, or you liked it. Otherwise, you shouldn't watch to the end of a video that you don't like. And not that I'm trying to tell you how to live your life, but if you like the things you like, you get more of what you like. In any case, feel free to troll me in the comments below. Check out the description. There's probably related videos. This video might even be part of a set, in which case the playlist link will be there. And if you're interested in more stuff that's somewhere in this realm between soldering and JavaScript, that's what the subscribe button's for, or so I've been told. Send positive vibes, karma, uh, feedback, suggestions for improvement are all welcome. Thank you. And the hot air gun is still cooling.